Welcome back into the Better Half Hour, my favorite segment where we bring you sports betting veterans winning more than they're losing. You've seen her crush on this show as well as the betting exchange. She is the face of Yahoo Sportsbook. Minty Betts back in the building. Minty, great to be with you. Great to be with you, Alex. Thanks for having me on. All right, let's debrief. How was your betting experience, Sweet 16 and Elite Eight? Um, you know, it was all right. I was extremely selective this college basketball season and didn't fire away like a degenerate at every game like I did in years past. Uh, Sweet 16 was the most surprising of the rounds for me. Um, I had Providence plus seven and a half over Kansas, Arkansas plus nine and a half over the Zags, and it was good for the dogs. But then I also had UCLA over North Carolina, and then it got worse once we got into the Elite Eight as I had Houston minus two and a half over Nova. So one, two, lost two. It was okay. St. Peter's was the shock of the tournament. Did you have confidence in them on National Peacocks Day over Purdue? What do you think is going to happen with the program moving forward? I am going to be honest. I didn't have confidence in them at all. I thought it was a fluke. The Peacocks brushed off Kentucky, Murray State, and then Purdue. Um, sadly, as we know, their Cinderella story ended yesterday to the Tar Heels. But going forward for St. Peter's, this is huge for them. I mean, they made history. They were the first 15 seed to advance to the Elite Eight. They gained a ton of confidence, had so much momentum, and now they're hungry to get back in the spot again. Uh, the Peacocks gained a lot of fans, and, and they'll be a team with quite some expectation once next season starts so it's all positive going forward all right gonzaga and arizona two one seeds bounce duke and nova move on who do you have the most confidence who do you have the least confidence in of those two teams left uh, just quickly kind of breaking it down. Of course, a lot of people are rooting for Duke because of the Coach K retirement narrative. And this is kind of like an alternate Cinderella story in itself. But the last few games, the players have really proven that they've deserved to be here because of their skill and their tenacity. Um, they're quite possibly the most talented team remaining. Um, North Carolina's advantage is size and experience, but they're inconsistent defensively all season. Kansas has offensive firepower, but they lack defense. And Nova adapts well to their opponents, but they don't have depth and they possess a really slow offense. Out of these four left, I like Duke the most and I least like Villanova. So do you have Duke over Kansas then in your final predictions? Yeah, I, I like uh, Duke and Kansas to, to meet uh, as, you know, the, the game, the last game. All right, let's switch to the NFL, your division there in Vegas, the AFC West. Tyreek Hill leaves to Miami. Do you think it's over for the Chiefs to dominate that division, or do you think that's a little overplay? First, uh, what a wild division in the last couple of weeks. All the teams in the AFC West seemingly got better, but the Chiefs were unable to keep Tyreek Hill, as you said, which is a big hit to this team. I mean, he's a top five wide receiver. Uh, the Chiefs don't often run the ball, and now they're left with Juju, Nicole Hardman, and CEH, all of which have been inconsistent. Um, although they do have Travis Kelsey left, so that's good. But Kansas City also doesn't have a good defense, so they really have to rely on that offense to keep up with their opponents. I don't necessarily think think their dominant run has come to an end, but I think the ease of dominating that division is only going to become more difficult this season. Um, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they somehow still won the AFC West, but we'll just have to see. Speaking of Hill, he now matches with Waddle, the fastest two-man tandem ever at the wide receiver position. Do you think the Dolphins can best the Bills and or the Patriots in the AFC East from a futures value perspective? Oh, I mean, I still think the Bills come out on top, not only in the AFC East, but in the AFC in general. I mean, they can finally get past the Chiefs now since they were pretty aggressive this offseason getting Von Miller. Um, as for the Dolphins, they can certainly have two of the fastest receivers in the league, but it all kind of comes down to the quarterback. I mean, people either love or hate Tua, and I'm struggling because we know the potential he can unlock. But towards the end of last season, he was just so inconsistent. His numbers were all over the place and against bad teams like the Giants, Jets, and Panthers. I mean, he hasn't played a full NFL season yet either. Hopefully having some reliable weapons will boost his confidence, but I don't think the Dolphins will be giving the Bills a run for their money anytime soon. Let's switch to the NBA. The East is a very tight race atop. Boston just got to the one seed as we speak. You got the Heat, the Bucks, the Sixers. How do you see the East seedings playing out? Are you going to fire on any futures on that? 
You know, and now looking down the home stretch, the Bucks and Celtics play the toughest schedule the rest of the way, in my opinion, compared to the Sixers and Heat. So I, I can certainly see uh, Milwaukee and Boston getting knocked down a couple games in the standings as we reach the end. Uh, I mentioned before a bit back, uh, the Heat were my favorite to win the East. I locked them in after the trade deadline at plus 550 to win the East. So odds really haven't changed much since then. I think they're still 5-1. to one. Um, I still stick by my Miami pick, but if I had to choose another team in the East, I'd look to probably go with Philly at plus 450. And over to the West, Phoenix, clearly the number one seed far and away. Do you see any team giving them a run for their money or do you expect them back in the finals? Uh, I kind of expect them back in the finals. I've always liked the Suns this season. I, I honestly don't like any other team to win this conference but if I had to pick another for value I would go with the Grizzlies at eight to one I mean John Morant is a beast Jackson and Bain are playing well the price is so good for a team that is on a good run Memphis could show up big time in the playoffs so I would go with the Grizzlies yeah 17 and two without Ja as well Minty thank you so much for stopping by as always don't go anywhere I'm firing on some NBA futures coming up next here on the better half hour <laughs> 